Mina, come on, Jesus freaking gamer here. Back with more Psalms, this time Psalm 72. And once again, before even verse 1, the, I mean, this one does have a title A Psalm of Solomon. David's son, the next king of Israel. And that's all I'm drawing from. That's it. It's so cool to me when you see a child take on their parents' faith and then they take it further than the parent did. Like, the, the investment was successful. The, the raising and the training all proved uh, worthwhile and good. And the child goes on to serve the Lord and they go on to be more blessed than the parent, more blessed than the father or the mother. And that is just so cool. Now, granted, Solomon didn't write a ton of psalms, but he was the wealthiest king of his time by far, the wealthiest of all of Israel's kings by far. And I think the wisest man in the world at his time of living. I don't think anyone rivaled him. And even militarily, no one messed with Israel his entire reign. He cleaned house at the beginning of his reign. And no one messed with him for the rest of his natural life. He was so blessed. Because he, even though he fell at the, near the end of his life, even though he did mess up some things, at the beginning, and probably during the middle as well, at least from what we can tell, he served God. So he got all these blessings that David had laid out for him. Now, of course, I'm sure he did his part to earn it, and I'm sure he, he had his fair share of obediences and demonstrations of faith and maybe even some sacrifices. A lot of those are not recorded in the Scripture, so I can only guess. But David, and regardless of how much you want to argue David did for him or David laid out for him, it is absolutely certain that David laid a very good foundation for him, not just in the kingdom but also spiritually. And, he, and for me personally, I usually, well, almost entirely think of things in the matter of, you know, do I like it, do I not? Do I want to be a part of it, do I not? Will this benefit me, will it not? Will I lose something, or will I not lose something? Um, I think of it entirely in terms of, like, myself. I don't think to myself, you know, okay, um... What can I do to be remembered in the history books? Or, and I don't have any children, so I don't think in terms of, you know, well, what do I need to do so that they will have better lives? When I have children, I probably will think that way, I mean, especially with the message that I'm talking about right now. I know right now, as a single man, no children, I simply think to myself, you know, I'd rather, you know, I'd rather have, you know, a little bit, I'd rather have a little bit more for myself, you know, I don't want anyone necessarily to, um, you know, remember me or agree with me or like the same things that I like. I certainly would love people to agree with me on Jesus. That I care pretty deeply about. But I don't necessarily want people to think the exact same way that I think or agree with me on everything that I say. I'd like them to hear me out. That'd be greatly appreciated. But if they don't, it's no skin off my back. Um, I'll continue to believe as I believe, and I'll continue to try to grow um, in a Christ word direction. But yeah, give me you know, give me something that I can enjoy now. Give me you know, maybe a, a few more years to my life. I don't need to be remembered. I don't need to be thought about. Those things just aren't important to me. Something you know, whatever can benefit me in the here and the now, and and whatever can be benefit me down the road. Those are the things that are important. Those are the things that I care about, not about a legacy or being remembered. Once I have kids, that attitude could change in the blink of an eye. Like, okay, I really don't, I don't need to be remembered, but I want them to have a good life. I want them to enjoy the moment. I want them to have, you know, good, strong, wholesome beliefs and opinions that, you know, that while being strong are at the same time flexible. So when they're wrong, they can be corrected the way they need to be. And hopefully, I have that mindset myself. And David did so much good by Solomon. To the point where he was the golden age of all of Israel. And he has not just... Yeah, he only has a few psalms. But um, he wrote 
he wrote one entire book in the Bible, Ecclesiastes, and almost the entire book of Proverbs. There were a few Proverbs near the end that were not King Solomon, but the vast majority were his, so he may not have gotten a bunch of Psalms like David did, but he got his fair portion of Scripture in. And, it's just, and, he, and it wasn't just recorded about him, he penned it himself. So, I mean, there was just such a good foundation there laid, and I just, I hope, regardless of um, what kids I do or don't have naturally, I do hope that there will be people who will agree with me on Jesus, who maybe even will see some of these videos, not just um, hear me, see me, and know me in person, but maybe see me, hear me, and know me through these videos, and maybe accept Jesus through these videos. That would be an awesome, awesome legacy right there. That would be something I would be immensely proud of. And so, I guess I waxed a little nostal nostalgic. I don't even have kids yet. Uh, nostalgia is not the right word. I'm not sure what the right word is, but just that thought of, yeah, I do want to leave something behind. Even though I'm so concerned with, you know, just enjoying myself and making sure that I'm the one who benefits, at the same time, I want to leave something behind that will benefit others. And that is one of the reasons that I have this YouTube channel here. It's a, quite the chronology of the last year um, and a few months of my life. So, for those of you who have been along for the ride, thank you so much. For those of you who have just come aboard, welcome. It's good to have you. And to everyone who's watched this, thank you so much for watching this video. I love you very much, and God bless.